What's up guys, I'm CJ and I am back for another video and today I thought I would share with you a mask review slash demo of the Coco Cosmetiques La Detox Noir Mask. So this is a company that I've been just absolutely in love with and if you watched my 2017 Best of Beauty video, which I will link down below, Coco was my brand of the year and her Dragon's Blood Serum was my product of the year. I truly love this brand, their products. I love Oyeta, I think she is an incredible woman, a really smart businesswoman, a great skincare formulator, and I'm just kind of gushing over this brand at this point. So about two-ish weeks ago, Oyeta actually sent me a box of goodies. It had her new Sublime Balm, a 5% alpha hydroxy acid exfoliating serum, and then she also sent the La Detox Noir Mask. So I have been talking to her kind of off and on about just skincare. She was kind of like my mentor in starting Formula Botanica, and she's somebody that I've grown pretty close with. She's just a really nice, very genuine person. So. She knows, and she's seen on my Instagram and on my YouTube many times, that I really, really love the Malenstrom Skin Problem Solver. Obviously, a lot of people have talked about it. You guys have seen it on my channel many times. So she, we were talking about products, and she actually offers two different mud masks. She has the Boo de Bouti, I think, or Boo de Boo, something like that. I clearly don't speak French, but that's the Beauty Mud. And then she has the La Detox Noir, which is the... Uh, uh, purifying traditional clay mud mask. So we decided that this would probably be the best one for me to try out, and she sent it on over. So I thought I would slap this baby on and tell you about it. So before I start talking about ingredients, let's just get to mixing, and then we can talk ingredients and all the other good stuff. Before I start applying this mask, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you want to see more mask slash skincare reviews, and subscribe to my channel to join our growing little family. And I will link all of my socials in the description bar down below, so if you want to find me there, that's great. If not, I totally understand. Let's get into this video. Alright, so next to me I have my little mixing bowl. I already have water in it. So you use one tablespoon of water to one tablespoon of product. Pretty simple. So I have a tablespoon of water in here, and I am going to crack open the mask. Which, this is her new packaging, you guys. It is stunning. So super beautiful packaging. I love the kind of like holographic, metallic stiff on it. So this mask retails for, I believe, $75 and you get 100 mils of product or 3.38 ounces of mask. And it comes in this little jar, glass, of course, a cute seal, and you get a little scooper with it as well. It, of course, is a dried powder mask like the Mae Lindstrom one or the Audacite one. So it looks like that in the container. If you can see, it's kind of like a charcoal gray. It doesn't really have a strong smell. So like the Malin's from Problem Solver, when you open it up, you get this like very strong, spicy uh, essential oil smell. This one just kind of smells like clay. Pretty simple there. So one tablespoon of product. Here's my one tablespoon measure. All right, so there's about a tablespoon of product. And we're just gonna plop it down in here. And one thing with masks, you guys, if you don't like the consistency, if it's too runny, if it's too thick, adjust your consistencies. I usually like a thicker mask, so if this is too thin, I'll, I'll add a little bit more product. Nobody says you can't. It's You bought the product, it's all up to you. So now I'm just going to take my May Lindstrom brush and mix it up. I think I've only used this mask once so far. I wanted to have a decent idea. So one thing I like to do with masks, because especially these dry masks that are very like rich in herbal extracts and other really beneficial additional ingredients, I like to mix it and then let it sit or steep for five to ten minutes. You can see it's kind of fizzing, foaming, I don't know if you can see. But I like to let it steep. It's essentially a tea with clay and muds in it. So really to get the most of those herbal extracts, any of the plant matter, just let it steep. So it's really bubbling now. So if you have the time, I highly recommend letting it steep. If you don't, it's not a huge deal. But it's something I like to do. So like you can see, this is a little thin for my liking. Of course, I'm following her ingredients, follow the instructions, but I want a little bit more. So I'm going to use this little scoop and I'm going to add about 
that much more to it. Right, so I have basically, it's about a tablespoon and a half, one and a half tablespoons of mask to one tablespoon of water, and this gives it a much better consistency for me, for what I like. So it looks like this. Beautiful. Now I'm just gonna let it sit for about five minutes and I'll come back and I'll show you. Some masks will actually thicken up a little bit as they steep, as the plant matter and the clays start to bind to water and break down. So I'm gonna let it steep, I'll be right, right. So it's been about five minutes now and I have actually taken my shirt off at this point because you're gonna see what I do with my clay masks. If you are gonna take the time to really do a clay mask spa experience and you have the time to do this, I highly recommend kind of like either putting on a very open, loose shirt or just putting a, a towel or a robe on because I'm gonna put a lot of this mask all around this area as well. Excuse the hair, I need to bleach it again. It's a little wild, but here we go. So one thing to consider when you're putting a clay mask or any sort of, sort of like mask that's going to really stimulate your skin, remember that the majority of your lymphatic system is located sort of like at your heart or your chest and above. So a lot of your lymph drainage, a lot of your lymphatic system is located here, through your neck, around your face. You might notice when you use some sort of clay mask that your neck will kind of itch and it's like there's toxins and there is kind of gunk built up that really needs to be stimulated and your lymph system is sort of like craving to be stimulated. So you're gonna see I put my mask all around this area, down my neck, down here, really to give the most action, stimulation, and help my lymph system get working. It's like massage, you always wanna incorporate your lymph system in into your skincare routine, whether it's massage, rolling, masks, any anything you can to stimulate that lymph system is gonna give you beautiful, clear, glowing skin, and it's gonna help your entire body. So, my skin is cleansed and toned at this point. Usually, if I was doing a Typical spa session, I will have done an exfoliant, acid exfoliant, or a scrub, whatever you prefer, then a clay mask, and then I would go on with a hydrating mask, whether it's a sheet mask or a gel mask. So I'm just gonna start, oop, and I'm already making a mess. I do a pretty thick layer, you'll notice. And again, that's totally up to you. If you want to do a thick layer, a thin layer, I like to do thick layers and then continue activating the mask. So I will use a mist, an Andalou mist, some sort of toner, hydrosol, whatever, and I will continue to reactivate the mask. So I will also leave the mask on longer than the 10 or 20 minutes that it recommends. That's just me. If you only have 10 minutes, then make it the best 10 minutes. So you'll see, I'll go all under here. The majority of my breakouts are from, they're not even breakouts, the majority of my breakouts are actually ingrown hairs. So I get a lot of problem around here. I kind of look like I'm having a hormonal breakout. It's not, it is in fact ingrown hairs. Let me know if you guys have any suggestions for shaving materials, shavers, razors, something that you guys use for obviously shaving. I have a bunch of different things that I've used. I've tried electric razors, I've tried different shaving gels, and nothing really seems to help with the ingrown hair situation. Obviously, I do an acid exfoliant immediately after shaving, but nothing really works for me. So let me know what works for you. But I do find that these mud masks help. This one actually really helped when I had a little ingrown hair situation going on. So one thing you'll notice about this mask versus like the problem solver, that's what I'm gonna compare it against because they're kind of similar ingredients wise. This one has a little bit of a smoother consistency. The problem solver tends to be, I find to be like a little chunky. No, there's nothing good or bad about that. I just find it to be like a little thicker, a little more chunky. This one, I don't know if it's just maybe more finely milled ingredients or the amount of ingredients is different, but it's just a little thinner. You will notice when we talk about ingredients in a second that there are some similar ingredients, not the same, but similar. I think everyone should have to try to do masks or skincare or makeup in a camera at least one time in their life. You start to understand why things happen. So you'll see I'm going all around my neck and yes, I will probably have to get in a shower to rinse this off because there's really not going to be a clean way to do it, 
but I'm totally fine with that. And I go heavy. You guys know if I'm going to use a product, I use a product. I don't do a couple drops of oil, I don't do a couple drops of serum. If I'm going to use something, I'm going to use it. So I'm going to pile it on. Any little sparse areas, I don't want to waste product, so like waste it by leaving it in. And then I think I'll do, I will go down my arms where I have a lot of like breakouts down my arm. So I'll do that to help with any kind of keratosis, acne scarring. I would have done that if I would have thought about that actually, instead of just putting it down my neck and everywhere. But I'll do this all over my shoulder. If I have like a cheaper clay mask, and honestly, I'm probably gonna do this with the Odacite mask because I don't like that. I'm gonna just put it all over my body. And I don't know if you guys can see, it kind of has a green hue to it. There is a bunch of spirulina and chlorella in, it, in this. So you're getting some different ingredients. All right, so now that's it. That's the mask. We're gonna let it sit for, let me see, 10, five to 10 minutes. So it's 10.39 right now. Wait one second. So it's 10.39 right now. We're gonna let it sit for five to 10 minutes. I'm gonna go 10, if not a little bit more. So let's talk about the ingredients. Let's talk about what I'm feeling right now. So upon application, I feel a little bit of like not stinging, but my face is warming in this area around my cheeks. I'm getting a little bit of like a, a tingling sensation. So ingredients wise, it's not as much tingling as I would get from the Malins from Problem Solver. When I talked to Oyeta, she said that this is actually a much more gentle mask. I don't think that it's super gentle. Like. It's definitely doing something. When I first started using this mask, or the first time that I went to use it, I was I went into it thinking that it was gonna be very like, just very gentle, not really something to worry about. It, but it was actually more intense than I expected, which I actually appreciated. So let's talk about ingredients, because there are some interesting ones. So, first ingredient is Moroccan Rasul clay. It then has ca Canadian colloidal clay, which is glacial clay. That's not an ingredient I have seen before in, in a mask. There's then bentonite clay. Himalayan pink salt, there's raw cacao seed powder. So in the Mae Lindstrom problem solver, she uses raw cacao. I don't know if it's the same ingredient. There's also L-ascorbic acid, which I really like in a mask. It is activated by water, so you're gonna get a nice brightening effect imparted onto your skin. There's charcoal powder, which is another really nice purifying ingredient. There's MSM in here, which I really appreciate. I like MSM taken internally. So MSM is also something that works really well applied to the face. It's gonna help with connective tissue and healing. There's some sodium bicarbonate, which would be probably to balance out the pH of this mask. There is chlorella and spirulina, which is an ingredient that you wanna sort of steep like tea. So, so you definitely want to let those ingredients steep and really break down into the mask. There's cucumber fruit extracts. So you're gonna have a little bit of a soothing effect. There's licorice root powder, which is known for imparting a brightening effect. And then, I really like the bottom part of this mask. There's white willow bark extract, which is gonna be sort of like your natural salicylic, so this is gonna be good for acne-prone skin. There's turmeric root powder, so that's gonna be a nice uh, anti-inflammatory effect. It's gonna help to soothe any, any irritation you might experience from this mask, or any irritation you might be experiencing in general. Then there's also cayenne extract, ginger root powder, and a cinnamon powder. So those are similar ingredients to the May Lindstrom Problem Solver. So the May Lindstrom Problem Solver, I wanted to compare the two just because they're somewhat similar. Similar. She uses Fuller's Clay and then Moroccan Rasul Clay. She has their cacao in there. She uses sea salt and red alea salt. So they have two different kinds of salts or different salts. That one also has L-ascorbic acid and sodium bicarbonate. It also has charcoal powder from bamboo. The difference from the male one is it has a little bit of more of an aromatherapy type of experience because she's included things like vanilla, lavender, there's some marshmallow in there, there's frankincense, there's more, a higher concentration of cinnamon, but it also includes clove and then it has turmeric and cayenne in it. So there are some similar ingredients. You would see that with the Okoko one, there is more functional ingredients, whereas like the Malin Sermon has more aromatherapeutic, essential oil based, ones that are gonna give you a real spa-like experience. However, the Malin Sermon does not have spirulina or chlorella, so it would just really depend what you want from a mask. This one is warming up on my face right now, 
And yeah, you can see on my shoulders where I've done a thinner layer, it's starting to dry a little bit. So that's what it looks like dried down. This is obviously still damp, so I will come back in about 10 minutes. All right, so the mask has been on for about 20 minutes now. I've rehydrated one time at about the 10 minute mark. This one does dry down a little bit quicker. So I'm gonna rehydrate one more time just so you guys can see what it looks like. You will feel it start to reactivate as you missed. So you could leave this on for 10 minutes or an hour, whatever you have time for, whatever you wanna do. I'm doing about 20 to 30, so I wanted to show you it being rehydrated and then I'm gonna pop in the shower and I will come back for the final results. So here's what it looks like. You can see it starts to go back down to its pre-dried on color. So when I first applied it, that was the same color. And you can feel that as soon as you add some more moisture back to the mask, it starts to reactivate. So I can feel some tingling, tingling around my jawline and around my cheeks. That's really where I feel the most tingling sensation. It's about the top of my cheekbones and then my jawline under jaw, which is good. That's where I have some stuff going on, so it's good to feel some activity there. Hopefully it's sucking that shit out, bringing it to the top, and helping me get rid of it. There's Harper helping me with the mask review. So I'm gonna pop in the shower and I will be right back. All right guys, so I literally just got out of the shower and rinsed the mask off. My skin feels so smooth. That's one thing that really, really impresses me about this mask, besides the ability to uh, clarify and purify my skin, my skin feels really, really soft. It feels like I've just exfoliated, and it doesn't feel like you're exfoliating your skin when you rinse the mask off. So I think it's just the ingredients of this product. It makes my skin feel so dang soft. You'll notice that I have some redness sort of just around my cheekbones, on my cheeks, and that is not, you'll notice some down here as well. That doesn't really bother me. This is a pretty active mask. You definitely feel it working. You feel it on your skin. So on a mask that's gonna be a little bit more active, that's gonna do a little bit more, you are gonna have some redness afterwards. And unless it really is super uncomfortable or hurting you, I think that is something to be expected. This is your skin being stimulated, it's blood being rushed to the surface of your skin, and it's not a terrible thing by any means. It's gonna help promote healing, it's gonna bring oxygen to your skin, it's gonna re-neutrify re your skin, I guess you would say. So I, I like that a lot. So afterwards, especially after you've used a more stimulating mask, I would go in with a sheet mask from your refrigerator, a gel mask, some sort of like soothing cooling mask to then take it back to the other side of things. After you've really stimulated your skin, go back in, put something on really soothing, really hydrating, and then sort of be like, give your skin that love and that hydration that it's craving. But yeah, you guys, I highly, highly recommend this mask. It is a little bit more expensive when you break it down by like volume to price versus the male instrument mask, but this one is one that I do recommend. I tried a bunch of other dry clay masks in the past and I've just not been impressed by them as much as I've been impressed by May Lindstrom's mask, but this is one that I would say is comparable in my book and I like it just as much. I don't recommend the Audacity mask, I don't recommend a lot of other masks, but this one I would say I will repurchase this and I will repurchase the May Lindstrom and I will just have them both on hand because I love them both equally. That's all for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed this review. Let me know in the comments down below what dry masks you've used and if you've tried the Okoko one. I will see you all in the next video, guys. Bye.